The Cozy Coacher video con deal smacks of absolute cronyism, more so because Chanda was on the credit committee, which cleared the loan, instead of maintaining an arm's length, which makes it even more questionable. What about firewalls and other governance issues that this raised? Or they don't apply to private banks and their source? Are they then a law unto themselves? Shouldn't she have rake used herself, like judges do these days, isn't there a clear conflict of interest? And what was RBI doing, was it asleep on the wheel? She was on the credit committee that sanctioned a loan of 3,250 crore rupees to the Videocon group in 2012 and she chose to be blasé about it till the full force of probe agencies was unleashed against her, and 3,250 crore rupees isn't exactly small potatoes, then ICICI chairman MK Sharma added to the mystery, the board does not see this as a conflict of interest in any manner since Videocon group is not an investor in new power renewables, as there was no need to recuse herself from this committee. This committee had many independent directors and the committee was not chaired by her. We have satisfactorily replied to the questions of all the regulators which is an ongoing process within a regulated entity like a bank and the regulators and the other government departments. However, this is privileged information between the regulators and the bank and it would be totally inappropriate for me to go public with them. In what can only be described as the mom and pop shop cult, in 2001, a total of seven members of the Kocher family including brothers Deepak and Rajiv Kocher, their father Virendra Kocher, Chanda's brother Mahesh and his wife Neelam together held 2% in credential finance, along with Videocon group that held 17.74% Chanda Kocher and six members of the Kocher family held shares in a little known firm called Credential Finance Limited, along with Videocon group, at least as far back as 2001, regulatory filings show. Three of the coachers were also directors on the company's board in 1995, when it was founded, though it's not clear if Videocon held a stake in the company at that time. A total of seven members of the coacher family including Chanda Kocher, her husband Deepak Kocher and his brother Rajiv Kocher together held a 2% stake in Credential Finance, its shareholding pattern for that year, 2001, filed with the Registrar of Companies, ROC, in 2007 showed. In the same year, 2001. Venugopal Dutch Videocon International Limited held 17.74% and its associate firm Joy Holdings held 0.8% in credential finance. Another major shareholder was Mahesh Chandra Pinglia, holding 0.8% Chanda Kocher was elevated as ICICI Bank Limited's chief executive officer in 2009. She sold or transferred her shares in credential finance before 2010, as records during 2010 to 2014 do not show her holding any shares in the firm. The other six coaches continued to hold their shares at least until 2013-14. The company has no clear promoter, as all its 90 shareholders hold less than 5% in the company. Founded in 1995 as Bloomfield Builders and Construction Company Limited, the company changed its name to Credential Finance in the mid-90s, according to Rob Documents. Credential Finance's directors since 1995 included Deepak Kocher as managing director, besides Rajiv Kocher and sister-in-law of Chanda Kocher. Neelam Mahesh Adwani. While all this much was being raked, Chanda Kocher behaved as if nothing had happened. ICICI tried to paper over the obvious cracks which had begun to resemble fault lines. Did this amount to Pontius Pilate, was the fifth prefect of the Roman province of Judea, serving under Emperor Tiberius from AD 26 to 36. He is best known today for the trial and crucifixion of Jesus, washing his hands of the grievous crime. In January 2009 just after buying a stake in New Power, Dhut transferred his shares to Deepak Kocher for 2.5 lakh rupees and resigned as director, but the association with the Dhut family did not end there. In March 2010, New Power got a loan of 64 crore rupees by a company named Supreme Energy, entirely owned by Mr. Dhut. At the end of the same month, Supreme Energy became a 94.99% shareholder in New Power. The remaining shares were held by Mr. Kocher. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to channel and click on bell for more daily videos.